Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Jay here. Welcome to Faith Evolved, where I talk about all things spiritual, metaphysical, philosophical, and mental health. And if it's your first time here, thank you very much for joining me today. And you can always check out the video section, and if what you see resonates with you, I would be more than humbled uh, by having your subscription. And of course, don't forget to like the video, share it on social media, and of course, hit the notification bell anytime I release any new videos, you will be the first to know. All right, so today's topic is all about some of my favorite Urantia book quotes. Some quotes that have helped me out in you know, some really dark times, you know, some times where I'm depressed, full of anxiety, doubts, uh, or just confused by life. These are some of the best passages of the entire Urantia book. And I'll probably have several um, editions of these videos, but this is the, the first installment of my favorite UB quotes. All right, so the first one and probably one of my top favorite Urantia book quotes is from paper 48, section 7.21, and it says, anxiety must be abandoned. The disappointments hardest to bear are those which never come. And the reason why this is my, one of my favorite ones is because when I was going through my dark night of the soul uh, about two and a half, three years ago, what got me through it was realizing that there's no point in, in uh, ruminating and worrying about the things that I was going through because of the fact that it literally never did anything to help me. And it sounds so simple on the surface, but if you really think about it, think of a time that you that anxiety has ever, A, felt good, and B, offered any valid solutions to make you stop worrying. And usually it doesn't. Uh, it might lead you to something that goes, okay, this is not working out for me, so let me come up with some solutions. But even with the solutions, you can still have worry about that. But once you abandon anxiety, you decide that anxiety is a useless emotion to have about any situation, and you decide to, you know, trust God and know that everything's going to work out and you repeat that process every time you are tempted to have anxiety or even in the middle of an anxiety spell or attack, you know, you can reel yourself back in pretty quickly as you practice that. So the disappointments hardest to bear are those which never come. That's what anxiety is all about. It's making you worry and try to, you know, you know, take you out of the present moment about something that actually isn't even going to happen most likely. All right, next one here is from paper 133, and it's the real universe is friendly to every child of the eternal God. So I know we, <laughs> I'm a big, you know, Star Trek fan, and you know, people are into Star Wars and all different kinds of sci-fi movies, you know, like Alien, Alien versus Predator, and a lot of these, you know, Alien movies assume that aliens would be benevolent. But how often do you see a movie where we, you know, assume that aliens are benevolent? In other words, that they are friendly to us. And yet if you think about it, almost every advanced race of humanoid in any <laughs> sci-fi movie or TV show, they had to have gotten there because they worked together to get there with technology and you know, the involvement of society and just, you know, ways of living. You know, they've evolved and they're probably a more enlightened society. So if you think about it, you know, especially if there's more advanced beings in, in the universe, they're probably going to be more friendly than even we are as humans. So the reality of the matter is that the universe is actually friendly, more friendly than even we are as human beings. All right. The next one here is from Paper 100, Section 2.7. When the flood tides of human adversity, selfishness, cruelty, hate, malice, and jealousy beat about the mortal soul... You may rest in the assurance that there is one inner bastion, the citadel of the spirit, which is absolutely unassailable. And that is referring to the God fragment within you, that within your mind, also known as the thought adjuster or the mystery monitor from the ranch book. And that is a, the part of you that no matter what you go through cannot be touched and will survive with you and your soul after you've you know, moved on from this earthly existence. There'll be another one I'm going to bring up that's, that's tied into that. All right, so this was another one of my top favorite Urantia book quotes. And this is from paper 192, section 2.1. And this says, Devote your life to proving that love is the greatest thing in the world. It is the love of God that impels men to seek salvation. Love is the ancestor of all spiritual goodness, the essence of the true and the beautiful. And that was spoken by Jesus Christ himself. And I just love that one. It's literally like, Devote your life, your entire life, the whole point of your life is to prove that love is the greatest thing in the world. That to me is, uh, I can, sometimes when I'm reading these Arantia book quotes, I can feel feelings I've never felt before in my life until I've actually read the Arantia book. And it's like this feeling of like peace and joy, like 
no matter how subtle, just rising up within my heart. And it's like, I know this is, you know, enlightened material. Let's put it that way. All right, here's another one. Said Jesus, if you truly want to find God, that desire in and itself is in itself evidence that you have already found him. And that's from, yeah, paper 130, section 8.2. So another one that, you know, whenever you feel like, man, is it really a God or has God really found me or vice versa? You know, just that desire in and of itself is proof. All right, here's, here's one from, another one from Jesus. He said, my father will ever respond to the faintest flicker of faith. So if you ever were worried, <laughs> am I going to survive? Is God going to save me? Am, and when I die, am I going to be resurrected or am I going to, you know, be reincarnated or whatever, you know, further, furtherance of your existence will be. It's all comes down to desire. Is that what you want? And of course, we live in a friendly universe. Is a friendly universe going to just let you live and die and, you know, give you no further experiences and just say, oh, eh. oh, well, no. If you desire to survive, you will. Remember that we create our own realities. Remember the law of attraction. You know, it's the fact that you desire it is what you is when it, it's going to manifest. So you don't have to worry if you or any anybody else that you know is going to survive after death. That's that's a given. That's the the default. And it just requires the faintest flicker of faith. We couldn't expect anything less from a loving father. All right. Here's another one here. Paper 56, section 10.20. Love is the desire to do good to others. And that's about the simplest definition of love I've probably ever seen, but the one that makes the most sense. Because there's another section in the Ranch book, which I, don't, I didn't get a chance to look up for this video, but it has to do with the fact that love is dynamic. It's not static. You cannot keep love and prove love exists. You have to let it flow through you to somebody else. And then when you see that effect on somebody else, you're reminded that love is real. All right, here's another one. The evolving soul is not made divine by what it does, by what it strives to do. And that's from paper 48, section 7.24. And why is that important? Well, it's tempting to think that, you know, God's going to judge us by how much we've progressed on earth in our short, finite lives here. And it's tempting to think that, you know, we failed if we didn't experience everything that we wanted to or progress or, you know, learn or whatever the case may be. And God looks at the intent, not necessarily your accomplishments. The intent will eventually get you to the accomplishments, but obviously, you know, you're a finite, imperfect human being here on planet Earth. You have to allow yourself that chance to evolve and that chance to grow. And that's what the spiritual world is looking at, the intent. All right, here's another one here. When a wise man understands the inner impulses of his fellows, he will love them. And when you love your brother, you have already forgiven him. And that's from paper 174, Section 1.4. And that's, you know, there's another one somewhere in the Urantia book that kind of goes along the same lines as you will fall in love with your, with your associates if you truly understood them. So once you understand somebody's motives and somebody's, you know, attitudes and just, just how they are, you'll see that, you know, and this kind of ties into uh, Course in Miracles as well. You know, that everything that anyone ever does to themselves or to you or anybody else is either love or or to cry for love. All right, so this next one here is uh, probably the best one for this particular video, only because of the fact that I was actually recently diagnosed with COVID. Yep, I'm on day five right now, and I'm doing okay. I'm feeling better now. I just some slight fatigue here and there and some coughing, but not too bad. But the reason why I love this is because, well, it's about viruses. But I like the way this particular passage uses viruses. So it says, love is infectious. And when human devotion is intelligent and wise, love is more catching than hate. If each mortal could only become a focus of dynamic affection, this benign virus of love would soon pervade the sentimental emotion stream of humanity to such an extent that all civilization would be encompassed by love. And that would be the realization of the brotherhood of man. And what more do I need to say, folks? That's I love how it says love is more catching than hate. So it's, uh, it's the more you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? You got the, the virus itself, like say COVID, and you have some that are more infectious than others, some that are more, you know, they, that spread more than others. 
Uh, so in this case, love actually uh, is more contagious. That's the word, contagious, <laughs> than, than hate is. Imagine that, folks. So it doesn't, may not seem like it, but just notice how much when someone else is hurting and you show them one act of kindness, you know, or one, you know, friendly gesture when they're, you know, depressed. It does, it does a lot, you know. And this world would not take too long to, to change and progress for the, for the better quickly if all of us decided to love. All right, continuing on here, here's another great one. Death is only the beginning of an endless career of adventure, an everlasting life of anticipation, an eternal voyage of discovery. And that's from paper 14, section 5.10. I just love this one because, again, it reminds me of Star Trek and all these other sci-fi adventure movies and, and TV shows. I mean, look at this. You got the uh, endless career of adventure. It's like joining Starfleet, you know? <laughs> Everlasting life of anticipation. It's like, you know, finding new worlds and new civilizations and species and an eternal voyage of discovery. Well, it reminds me of Voyager and Discovery, the two series from Star Trek, but also <laughs> it reminds me of just the fact that we'll be, you know, able, able to explore the entire galaxy and beyond and other dimensions. I mean, there's just so much out there that even our puny little human minds can't even comprehend or even conceive of on this 3D planet we live in now. And continuing on the same vein here, this one is, you know, it is indeed an epic in the career of an ascending mortal, this first awakening on the shores of the mansion world, there for the first time to actually see your long-lived and ever-present angelic companions of Earth days, there also to become truly conscious of the identity and presence of the divine monitor who so long had dwelt your mind on Earth. Such an experience constitutes a glorious awakening, a real resurrection. And that's from paper 113, section 7.1. And that one, when I'm feeling down, I'm feeling depressed, or I'm, I'm doubting my, uh, you know, resurrection someday after I die, it's like, you know what? That's amazing just to, to imagine, you know, just one day I'm going to wake up in a new body, in a heavenly realm compared to where we live now, and see, oh my God. My guardian angel is real. Oh my God, the God fragment that was in my mind is really a part of me. I mean, that is, a, that's gonna be the most joyous day of my entire life. I'm sure many other of you would agree. All right, continuing on here. I love this one here. It's a little long winded, so bear with me, but I can just imagine this celestial being saying, what an adventure, what a romance. A gigantic creation to, the, to be administered by the children of the Supreme, these personalized and humanized adjusters, these adjusterized and eternalized mortals, these mysterious combinations and eternal associations of the highest known manifestation of the essence of the first source and center and the lowest form of intelligent life capable of comprehending and attaining the Universal Father. Master Paper 112, Section 7.18. And I just love the juxtaposition of the highest possible experience that any being can have, you know, next to us lowly human beings. And the fact that we can traverse that expanse over all eternity is absolutely amazing. All right, I got one more here. And it's the longest one, but I love it because it's again, it gives you hope of what's to come. And this is from paper 112, section 5.22. The thought adjuster, also known as the God Fragment, will recall and rehearse for you only those memories and experiences which are part of and essential to your universe career. If the adjuster has been partner in the evolution of ought in the human mind, then will these worthwhile experiences survive in the eternal consciousness of the adjuster. But much of your past life and its memories, having neither, neither spiritual meaning or mirage of value, will perish with the material brain. Much of the mortal experience will pass away as one-time scaffolding which, having bridged you over to the Marantia level, no longer serves a purpose in the universe. But personality and the relationships between personalities are never scaffolding. Mortal memory of personality relationships have cosmic value and will persist. On the mansion worlds, you will know and be known, and more, you will remember and be remembered by your one-time associates in the short but intriguing life on your rancher. And that is huge because I know there's a lot of experiences that, that people have had in life. Some traumatic experiences or hurtful experiences, you know, rejection, 
um, you know, maybe, you know, divorce, losing a child, you know, so many different things that can happen to us in life. And when we get to the mansion worlds, we're given a new body, we're given a new mind. And only that, that those things that have spiritual value, the good things in, in our lives, the, the things that brought, you know, the fruits of the spirit, all those things are the, the only things that we're going to have memories of. And everything else is scaffolding the past way as if it never happened. That to me is just, it brings so much hope and peace and joy to me, knowing that someday, you know, some of the things that I've gone through in my life, you know, some of that, like dark night of the soul and, you know, anxiety, depression, OCD, all those things are, it would be as if it never happened. So definitely looking forward to that day, my friends. And I'll have one runner up one for you. And this is more kind of a fun. Uh, this is about David Zebedee, probably my, one of my favorite non, you know, disciple characters of the life and teachings of Jesus. And this is when, <laughs> this is when he was saying to Jesus that he has his uh, messenger core and uh, his, the folks that were protecting Jesus and, you know, uh, protecting the disciples and, and sending out, you know, messages to other disciples. Uh, he goes, it is in my heart to do this and none can stop me. That's David Zebedee from 154, 5.3. All right, folks, I know I've gone through a lot here. I hope this video has been, you know, helpful to you in some way that you felt, you know, some peace and hope about the future and about your life now that it's not in vain. So again, thank you for watching my video and God bless.